This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. On April 25th, the Obama administration released some intelligence suggesting that Syria may have used chemical weapons. The information was vague, but some themes in the coverage were clear. USA Today's front page sounded pretty certain, but inside the paper we learn the U.S. is still assessing the claims. The Obama administration confirmed evidence of nerve gas, was how CBS anchor Scott Pelley put it. But then we heard CBS correspondent Major Garrett put it this way. The White House says it cannot definitively prove the Assad regime used chemical weapons. For many pundits, the story was that Syria had crossed Barack Obama's so-called red line. That's a reference to the comment Obama made last year that if the U.S. saw a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized, it would take some action. Well, these intelligence reports don't seem to meet that standard, but some elite talking heads think otherwise, and they're worried about a show of U.S. weakness. Here's David Gergen. Having said that this is a red line, having said he would take action, I think it's baffling why when their evidence comes in, we'll say, well, well, let's take it to the U.N. and let them sort this out. Uh, take it to the U.N., I'm sorry. It's as if they're saying, how can we threaten other countries with any credibility if we're not willing to use military force to respond to some iffy intelligence? It's like the Iraq War never happened. Of course, there's still plenty of media discussion about the Boston Marathon bombing suspects, but one thing in particular caught our eye because it says a lot without saying a word. When the Tsarnaev brothers were identified, the fact that they were what most people would call white made things very confusing for some people, some of them in the media, who are used to defining and depicting terrorists as, well, not that. Apparently it was too confusing for some. Look at the May 3rd cover of The Week magazine, which was brought to our attention by the website Brofiling. Two Caucasians, but rather artistically interpreted, you might say. Someone might want to tell CNN's John King we found the dark-skinned male he was talking about. Finally, right-wing talk radio hosts talk about the accused Boston bombers as being motivated or perhaps emblematic of their religion, but they're not the only ones. On April 28th, New York Times columnist Tom Friedman argued Muslim culture has some explaining to do. He was incensed that the Tsarnaev brothers cited the U.S. wars in Iraq and Afghanistan as motivation for their attack. That's a non sequitur, he said, and we've allowed radical Muslim groups and their apologists to get away with it. Friedman says the suspects were so upset by something America did in a third country that they just had to go to Boylston Street and blow up people who had nothing to do with it. Too often we just nod our heads rather than asking, what kind of sick madness is this? Now, most would agree that responding to violence by attacking people who had nothing to do with it is pretty sick. It's also precisely what Tom Friedman did after September 11th. He told Charlie Rose in May 2003 that popping the terrorist bubble would mean that the U.S. had to go over there and take out a very big stick. He went on. And what they needed to see was American boys and girls going house to house, from Basra to Baghdad, um, and basically saying, which part of this sentence don't you understand? You don't think, you know, we care uh, about our open society? You think this bubble fantasy, we're just going to let it grow? Well, suck on this, okay? That, Charlie, was what this war was about. We could have hit Saudi Arabia. It, would've, it was part of that bubble. Could have hit Pakistan. We hit Iraq because we could. That's some sick madness. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.